Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is going on fourth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 16. All right, so I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today because we're about to get started. And if you're saying, wait, we needed a worksheet for this? Yeah, well, it does help to have the worksheet ready. That way you're able to work along with me. So to do that, you should see a link below or somewhere around this video where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode and the other episodes in the fourth grade FSA series. Now that you have your worksheet, go ahead and pause the video and solve number one and number two to the very best of your ability, okay? I want you to mark up your text. I want you to work it out. I want you to throw down your best and then you're gonna come on back and check your work. So I will see you in a second. Welcome back fourth grade. Okay, so you know how I like to rock and roll. The very first thing that we're going to do is identify the question type. So I'm seeing select all, there's a clue. And I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five answer choices. So without even reading into this too much, what kind of question is this? Yeah, it's a multi-select question. So write that down if you did not already. That means that there should be more than one correct answer and it's our job to go through each one of them and either keep it or eliminate it. So let's go ahead and do it. This says select all that are equivalent. What does equivalent mean? Equal, right? That are equivalent to three times five eighths. Okay, so let's talk about what this means. This means three groups of five eighths. So this three right here stands for the groups. And the five eighths is the amount or things in each, the amount in each. Okay, so now that we know that, then let's go ahead and solve it too, okay? So to do this, I like to change it into a fraction. So I put three over one times five eighths. I know a lot of teachers in fourth grade teach their students to do the whole number times the numerator and then just have your denominator down below. But you have to keep in mind that in fifth grade, students will have to multiply fractions anyway. So we might as well teach them that three equals three over one and then we just multiply across. Okay. So this would be three times five is, hit me with my threes pretty please. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. And then we do our denominators. One times eight is eight. So 15 eighths, which I totally see as an answer right here. So let's go ahead and mark D. But this also says select all. So let's make sure we go through all of them, okay? Okay, so with part A, 
5 eighths times 5 eighths times 5 eighths. There are three groups of 5 eighths, but we're multiplying them. We have to keep in mind that multiplication is the same thing as repeated addition. So if this said 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, that would be correct. But because it has a multiplication sign, it's not right. Okay, let's check out B. We have 15 24ths. Well, we know that the numerator should be 15, but our denominator is 8. So it's not 15 24ths, it's 15 eighths. We can eliminate that one. Okay, here I'm seeing one, two, three groups of one, two, three, four, five. Eights. Each one of these represents five eighths. And if we were to join all of these together, we would get 15 eighths because we have five, 10, 15, and each piece represents an eighth. So this would be correct. And now over here, it looks like we have one whole and then four, five, six, seven, seven eighths, one and seven eighths. But this is also, eight eighths plus seven eighths, which is the same thing as 15 eighths. So technically E is correct as well. So y'all, we have three correct answers. We have choice C, D, and E as our answers for this one. So go ahead and make any corrections you need to make and then join me for number two. All right, for number two, let's check out the question type first. I'm seeing a lot of words. I'm seeing some boxes with letter choices in it. So what kind of question is this? It is, and we're gonna fill in the statement so it is an editing task. Boom, all right, let's go ahead and read it. Mrs. Highstand, <gasps> I hope Mrs. Highstand's fourth graders are watching this. Mrs. Highstand and I go way back. Mrs. Highstand is one of my buddies from Windy Ridge, so shout out to you all at Windy Ridge. I miss you, I love you, oh. Okay, let's go ahead and get going. And she loves to, to garden and all of that too, so this fits her perfectly, doesn't it? Okay, let's read it. Mrs. Highstand fills a clay pot with soil using a garden shovel. The garden, shovel scoops a half cup of soil. Mrs. Highstand uses 14 full scoops of soil to fill the clay pot. Let me make sure I've got this. So Miss Highstand, she's filling a clay pot. Let's pretend like this is my shovel. She's filling a clay pot using a garden shovel. The garden shovel scoops a half a cup of soil and she puts 14 full scoops in there. So we're going like one, two, three, all the way to 14, okay? Now that makes more sense. So that's one thing is like to act it out or draw it out in order for it to make sense. So complete the statements to determine how much soil it takes for Mrs. Highstand to fill the clay pot. Fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct, okay. So let me draw this out. She has some kind of clay pot. And then she's got this. <laughs> I am not the best drawer. All right, there's my shovel. <laughs> and this shovel can hold a half cup of soil. And she puts 14 of these. So she does this 14 times. So it should be 14 times one half. So here, Mrs. Highstand can use the expression 14 times one half to determine that she needs how much. So let's figure out what 14 times one half is. So 14 times one half. Remember, I like to put my whole number over one to get in the habit and ready for fifth grade. So let's multiply across. We know that when we multiply fractions, we just fly across and multiply. So 14 times one is 14. One times two is two. And we should know that this fraction bar right here means division. So 14 divided by two is what? Seven. Seven. So it should be, how much soil does it take for her to fill the clay pot? It takes seven cups because each one of these is half a cup and that makes sense because you go one, two, there's one cup, one, 
two, there's two cups. And when you do that 14 times, you're going to get seven cups. So Mrs. Highstand can use the expressions 14 times one half to determine that she needs less than seven cups of soil, greater than seven cups of soil, or exactly seven cups. Exactly seven cups, that's right. Awesome. All right, go ahead and take this time to make any corrections to your paper that you need to make, and then stay tuned so I can point you in the right direction for some more practice videos. All right, everybody, now I wanna point you in the direction of some more videos to practice. So if you know that you need some more help with multiplying fractions, I want you to first check out McCarthy Math 155 and go to Unit 8. It has a bunch of videos on multiplying fractions, and it actually has basically every skill that you need to know in fourth grade. So go ahead and check that out. Now you you do need to become a member in order to see the videos, but what you can do is try it out for free for seven days. All you do is you sign up with your name and your email, and then you get seven days for free. And you can watch as many videos as you want during that time. And who knows, maybe it's the right fit for you. And teachers, during your free trial, if you're like, oh, I would totally love to like share these videos with my students, you totally can. And I walk you through how to do just that in the tutorials tab on my website. So go ahead and check out McCarthy Math 155. The next place that I'd like to refer you to is to my How to Pass the Math FSA video for the same standard that we worked on today. Now the How to Pass the Math FSA series was created several years ago, back when the FSA was a computer-based test. Now it's a paper-based test, which is why I wanted to create the Math FSA Boot Camp series to reflect the paper-based test. So the questions look a little different on how to pass the Math FSA, just some of them, but they're still excellent practice. It's still standards-based, and I truly encourage you to check it out. I'd also love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you're watching on YouTube, if you could go ahead and smash that like button, I would really appreciate it. Not just because it makes me feel good, but because it supports my mission. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun and make it click and to make it stick for as many students as I possibly can. When you guys like these videos, it brings more students to me and I want to be able to help them and not have them struggle with math all the time. So thank you so much for supporting me on my mission. You, you don't even realize how many students y'all are impacting when you do that. Thank you so much. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode. So let's get to the next episode already, okay? All right, bye guys.